What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be continuing uh, on with our ratings analysis and in today's video we're going to detail all of the batting and, and fielding ratings slash attributes and what they mean in MLB The Show. So let's go ahead and jump into each of these and tell you guys what they mean. So first things first, whenever you go to the batting and fielding ratings, I want to just kind of show you guys how to get to them like I did with the pitching ratings. So whenever you go and click on a player and click edit player and you go down to their attributes, you're going to go to their batting and fielding ratings. Now you're going to have, for example, on pitchers, you're going to have the opportunity to select between their pitching, their batting and fielding attributes and their pitch types. Um, so, you know, from a batter player's perspective or a fielder, you know, this is just going to automatically pop up for you. You're not going to get to select their pitching types or anything like that. But if you switch their positions, you'll be able to access those extra things. So if I switched a position player to starting pitcher or something like that, then I could access their pitching stats and their batting and fielding stats and everything like that. I'm not sure exactly any scenarios where you would want to do that, but something that is worth considering. So once we go ahead and actually click on attributes here for a batter slash fielder, we're going to go ahead and get a list of attributes as they call them. Uh, everything relating to batting, I believe, first, and then we go to fielding attributes after that. Um, but we do start off here with the batting tendency up at the top. Now, this is pretty straightforward, but I do want to kind of detail for you guys what pole hitter and, and uh, you know, opposite mean or extreme opposite or extreme pole, what exactly these things mean for you and for your player. So from a batting perspective, whenever you have the whole field tendency, that means that you're not going to generally hit it in one direction more often than another direction. You might hit it to left field, you might hit it to right field, center field, your hits are going to be spread out. However, whenever we talk about a pole hitter or an extreme pole hitter, this is going to be a tendency to pull the ball, if you guys can imagine. Imagine that you're standing in this stance and you're pulling on a rope. You're going to be pulling the, the ball towards you, essentially. So from this stance with Rosa Reina, a pole hitter in his aspect would be pulling the ball to the left. A uh, opposite field hitter would be hitting the ball to the right. They would be pushing the ball to the right. Um, so, you know, maybe that helps you guys understand pull versus pull push or pull versus opposite. Um, essentially, you have to consider which direction the batter is batting. Um, and a pull hitter, you know, basically pulls the ball towards where their, their back is, you know, so his back is facing what would be left field, and that would be where he pulls the ball. Opposite uh, would be pushing it towards where his chest is facing. And same thing if you had a, a separate batting stance, if he was batting from the other side of the plate, it's the same thing. And, you know, you obviously have the pole hitter versus extreme pole. You have opposite versus extreme opposite. That just determines how your tendency is. If you're extreme, it means that pretty much every time you hit the ball, it's going to be going in that direction. And that's when you see defensive shifts against those players. Whenever it's opposite or just pull, then you have a tendency to go in that direction, but it's not as consistent. Another quick way to think about pull and push, as I like to call it, whenever you are a pull hitter, you are going to pull the ball to the side of the field that you are batting on. So if you're batting from the left side of the plate, a pull would be to the left side of the plate. If you're batting from the right side of the plate, a pull would be to the right side of the plate. So a couple of ways for you guys to think about it there so that you guys can get a grasp of what pull and opposite hitters do. Next, we get a potential rating, and this potential rating, as I've detailed in many videos, essentially sets what about the max overall is for this player. Now, it doesn't guarantee that a player is ever going to reach that overall, but this number is directly linked with that player's potential overall. So Randy Arozarena, right now where we have him, could reach up to an 88 overall. Now, one thing to consider is that within the game, all ratings are dynamic, so even the potential rating can go up and down. Um, but essentially this potential rating is setting a number for what that player's ultimate goal would be in terms of their overall. Like I said, it can go up and down, but if I get Randy Arozarena, I can expect that if he plays well and develops well, he can hit up to an 88 overall. 
I next want to talk about contact. I want to talk a little bit about the exact definition that we have from the game developers from a long time ago. And contact in terms of MLB The Show increases your chances at hitting line drives. And I also want to talk about this in conjunction with plate vision because plate vision, you know, a lot of people kind of mistake one for the other and what they do. Um, they are a little bit confusing, but they both combine to determine how big your PC CI is. So whenever you're hitting, if you were on zone hitting, for example, that circle that you use to target the ball, that increases and decreases in size determined based on a combination of your plate vision and contact. Now that is directly from MLB The Show developers uh, back in the day. Um, but essentially what's going on here is your contact number is going to be how well you actually hit the ball. You know, talking about your contact versus left contact versus right, obviously these stats are versus left-handed pitchers and versus right-handed pitchers. Um, so, you know, this is going to be how well you hit the ball from that side and combining these things, you know, combining your contact with your plate vision is going to result in a size for your PCI indicator. So, you know, those things combine for that. But in addition, you know, in terms of talking about plate vision, we talk a little bit about how it helps you make contact. It really just kind of helps you, helps your players see the ball, something that has been been detailed a few times and I've, I've done a little bit of research on it now is that MLB and uh, MLB the show and their you know developers have kind of been clear about the fact that your PCI is just where the the batter is expecting the ball to enter the zone so let's say you place your PCI slightly away from the ball your plate vision and your contact are going to combine to determine whether you can still get a hit on that ball if you have really high plate vision your PCI doesn't need to be exactly on the ball in order to make contact and once you make contact with the ball your contact versus right and contact versus left numbers are going to determine whether that ball actually becomes a hit whether it's a really well hit line drive whether it goes in between the defenders and things of that nature that's how those factor in based on the information that I've been able to find online so there's a little bit more of a clear definition for it for you guys in terms of contact and plate vision vision. Next, let's talk about power, power right and power left. These are pretty straightforward. These are going to increase your ability to hit home runs and how hard you hit the ball. So even if you're not a home run hitter, if you're a really good line drive hitter, having more power is going to make those balls that you hit more powerful and come off the bat faster. In the game, whenever you actually hit the ball, it gives you an exit velocity. That exit velocity is determined by your power and your combination of your contact. If you have better power, you're generally speaking going to hit the ball harder and faster and going to have a higher exit velocity. A lot of times your power can result in a bobbled ball by a defender if it's hit right at a first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, third baseman. If it's hit really hard, sometimes they'll drop it. Um, and that power is directly influencing that. Now, obviously, most people associate power with home runs, and that is true. The more power you have, the further you can hit the ball and the, the, the higher you can hit the ball. So, you know, it's, it's still going to depend on getting contact on the ball and everything like that, but your power is going to increase how hard that ball is hit and the exit velocity of the ball whenever you make contact with it. Next up is bunting ability and drag bunting. So yes, these are two different things. Bunting ability is whenever you actually go up to the plate and you hold triangle, obviously for PS5 I'm on. Um, if you hold triangle prior to the, the pitcher's wind up and everything like that, this is gonna determine how well you can lay down a bunt versus drag bunting, which is once the pitcher is in their wind up and, and essentially throwing the pitch and it's coming at you and you decide you wanna perform a drag bunt is what it's called. You try to lay down a bunt really quickly and kind of ambush the pitcher or ambush what they're trying to do and maybe get a base off of it or, or a suicide squeeze where you 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 bunt the ball down you drag bunt it and the the third base the person on third base comes home and gets a run you know that is what drag bunting is versus regular bunting and these are just going to affect how good you your player can actually do at so we've already talked about plate vision and how it is your player's ability to get the bat on the ball and contact is your player's ability to get a hit once the bat is on the ball. Now let's go ahead and talk about plate discipline. 
As far as the information that we have in terms of MLB The Show from the developers and everything of that nature, plate discipline affects your ability to check swing. So a player that swings and misses at balls or, you know, maybe goes after pitches that are outside of the zone, they're generally going to have lower plate discipline. Well, the way that that actually practically uh, affects MLB The Show from the information that we have is that when you try to check swing, you're going to probably go around and you're not going to get that check swing if you have a low plate discipline number. If you have a high plate discipline number, you're going to be more effective at checking your swing and not swinging at those pitches that you, you know, decide late or out of the zone or unhittable. Next, we move on to batting clutch, which is very similar to pitching clutch. This is essentially with players on base, with players in scoring position, in late innings, in situations where your team needs a run to tie or something of that nature, or maybe you're a, a power hitter, you have two outs and you need to get a, a solo shot home run in order to get something going, or you need to get on base. Whatever those types of special situations might be, clutch situations, your player is going to perform better in those situations if you have have higher batting clutch. That one's pretty straightforward, and that is something that is is you know pretty direct in terms of how it impacts your game. It kind of comes into play in those certain situations, and that is probably one of the more important stats here from a batting perspective. Next, we're going to go ahead and go on to some physical and defensive slash fielding attributes. So we already talked about durability a little bit during the pitchers one, but what we'll do here is we'll you know just say that durability is essentially is going to impact how often your player gets injured or whenever you're getting low on stamina if you can play them down to the bottom of their stamina bar without that player getting injured or suffering major injuries you know as you know if you've played franchise mode you have to rotate players in and out at all different positions or else they get tired over time and their durability number is going to affect how often they get injured and whether or not they can be left in there for more games on end and, and things like that next Next up is their physical attributes. We'll talk about speed. This one is very straightforward. It is your player's quickness in terms of getting to a base. It's their straight line speed. Um, you know, that arm strength is going to be the velocity with which you can throw a ball. So arm strength is going to be, you know, how quickly, you know, or what velocity you can throw a ball from, say, third base to first base. A player with a higher arm strength is going to get that ball there faster and harder, whereas a ball, or sorry, a player that has a lower arm strength is going to throw that ball slower. It's going to potentially, you know, be beat out by a runner or something of that nature. You want those higher arm strengths, but that's what that directly means. When you are making any type of throw, arm accuracy is going to determine how accurate that throw is going to be. So whether you have a strong arm or a weak arm, arm accuracy is going to be incredibly important for getting the ball on target, making sure that there aren't errors, there aren't overthrows or anything like that, and so your arm accuracy is going to determine how accurate you are in placing the ball going from where you're at to wherever you're throwing the ball. Then from a fielding perspective, again, your reaction is going to be how quickly you, and, and how effectively you react to where the ball is going. So this applies to pretty much every position. If you've ever seen a ball hit to the outfield and your, your outfielder takes forever to move out of his stance and get to where the ball is going, that's be probably because they have poor reaction. So reaction is going to be, you know, whether you're able to react and make that play. And then fielding ability is once you've reacted to that play and you're getting yourself in the right position, fielding ability is how well you can actually glove the ball, how, how well you can actually get that ball. And, uh, you know, that is going to be, you know, how it, it proceeds. So your reaction comes first, your fielding ability comes second, and then your arm comes into play after that in terms of throwing it to wherever you need to throw it to. And the final two attributes are going to be your stealing and your base running aggressiveness. So your stealing ability is going to be directly linked with how well you're able to steal bases and how uh, how good you are at not getting caught stealing, you know, whether it be they try to pick you off at first base and you react quickly enough to get back to first base, that's going to be what plays in there. 
base running aggressiveness pretty much directly ties in with stealing and the the actual definition that we have for base running aggressiveness is that it determines the player's ability to change direction between bases with ease so again this is going to be something that uh, kind of you know affects whether you're able to get back to the bag if they're trying to pick you off or something of that nature whereas stealing is going to be more so of how how good do you get that first jump and beat out that throw to second base if you're trying to steal second base so stealing is more the general you know act of stealing a base whereas base running aggressiveness is how well you're able to change direction how well you're able to get back to the base or or change direction you know maybe if you get in a rundown or something like that if you have really good base running running aggress aggressiveness you'll be able to change directions and stuff like that a little bit easier I definitely know that a lot of these batting and fielding attributes slash ratings are really straightforward within the game, but definitely worthwhile to have this video out there for anybody that is curious. There is some pretty good information out there actually on the internet about this, so you can always look that stuff up and find definitions and whatnot if you uh, you know, weren't quite satisfied with what I gave you here today. But if this video did help you guys out or you find this information valuable, make sure you leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you guys have a good one.